Okay, so perhaps let's get started. So we are not very delayed. And uh, anyway, the first part is a little bit introductory. So people will still not miss the core part of the presentation. So I hope you can all hear me. I have been having a lot of troubles with my internet. Um, so welcome and thank you all for coming to this month's uh, first migration seminar. For those of you who are new, the migration seminar series is a monthly seminar in which we invite researchers and practitioners whose work addresses human mobility to share and discuss their work with us. The series is organized jointly by Master's Graduate School of Governance, uh, UNU Merit and Massimide. Uh, today we're very lucky to welcome Dr. Ma Magda U. Luce, I'm sorry, Magda, I tried to, uh, to practice it. Uh, Dr. Magda is a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Groningen, currently a visiting researcher at the Max Planck Institute for the study of ethnic and religious diversity. Her recent fo uh, work focuses on the type of policies that local governments in origin countries devise to address emigration and its effects and the factors affecting the decision to implement or not local emigration policies. Um, uh, other interests include the relation between migration and social spatial inequality, labor migration and migrant economic activities and the economics of humanitarian refugee migration. Uh, she has held visiting research fellowships and at the International Migration Institute in Oxford, the University of Amsterdam and Central European Labor Studies Institute in Bratislava. Uh, and has worked on projects for several governments and international organizations, including the European Commission, the International Labour Organization, the International Organization for Migration, and ASPON. Um, uh, as I mentioned in my invitation, the um, seminar is recorded. Uh, so um, uh, this rec uh, this uh, we record the seminar, so it allows us to share it on the YouTube channel for those who couldn't make it. Uh, once you join the seminar, your camera and mic will automatically be off. However, if you find it uh, necessary for your participation, of course, you can switch them on to participate in the seminar. Uh, a little bit about the housekeeping. So seminars are planned for one hour of which around 40 minutes are set aside for uh, presentation and 24 questions discussion with the audience. So if you have any clarification questions, feel free to ask them, of course, during the presentation, but please save the more substantial questions and comments for after the presentation. Thank you all for coming and I'm gonna give the floor for Dr. Magda and I'm sorry, I couldn't get the family name as you wanted to pronounce it. <laughs> so, no worries. Um, it's Magda Ulcerusha. Thank you. Um, thank you. It's really a pleasure to present in Maastricht, whether that's um, in, in um, person or online, uh, my alma mater. And I always look forward to the insights that the great team um, provide. Uh, I'm going to share my screen now for my presentation. I hope everybody can see it. Um, so uh, today I will be discussing um, the about the rise of local responses to immigration and I'll be focusing on a specific case study in Romania. So I want to start with um, um, an observation uh, and uh, namely that is that there has been a local turn in emigration policy making. So um, local governments from or in origin countries from countries in uh, in Europe, Romania, my own case study, but also Lithuania, Latvia, countries in Africa are increasingly proactive in creating their own strategies and policies in response to emigration. So not immigration, but emigration. More and more local governments are taking it upon themselves to address the human and the material losses that emigration in, in entails and to develop their own policy, ensuring that emigration enhances rather than undermine um, collective welfare. So the welfare of the, of the city, of the locality. Moreover, global initiatives such as the GFMD mayor mechanism, the mayor's dialogue on growth of, and solidarity from ODI or the mayor's migration council further uh, promote um, such local initiatives in origin countries, but they also promote cooperation between cities in origin and destination countries. So these developments should not be surprising because oftentimes it is at a local level that um, the effects of emigration, whether those are positive or negative, are more strongly felt. And um, yet, 
um, for all this um, development, for all this policy development, uh, we um, do not yet have any information about the type of policies and strategies that local governments implement, the objectives behind those policies, when do they implement them, why do they implement it, how do they differ from national um, immigration policies, what are their effects, so on and so forth. So there is a blind spot in, in research in terms of um, the effect of, in terms of local immigration policies. Most of the research and theorizing has focused at the national level or has focused on the receiving country side on local immigration policies or integration policies and national immigration policies. So this is the context in which this paper is developed, in which this presentation is developed, um, basically trying to open up a conversation on a, on a policy that is um, in full bloom uh, in many cities and in many localities. There are two specific objectives that I aim to um, achieve with this presentation. The first one is to introduce the term, to introduce what I call local emigration policies to discuss what are they, why do the governments in origin countries implement them, how do they differ from national policies, so on and so forth. The second uh, objective of this paper and of this presentation is to provide an example to answer these questions. The example is a village in this case, um, in Romania, a country that has experienced um, high immigration in the past couple of years, a village that has experienced um, high immigration, but which is also playing or implementing a number of uh, measures and policies meant to, to address emigration from the village and its effects. Um, so these two objectives will basically structure the rest of the presentation. Um, before, um, so I will start with the topic of what are local immigration policies. And of course, due to the nature of, of this topic that it's so new, um, these are just um, incipient ideas taken from the, the taking from observations and looking at the case studies and looking at, at what is going on in the field. So local immigration policies, and there's, uh, I wanna start basically a bit with the terminology and then provide a definition. And uh, I want to note that within the national immigration policies arena, which is quite a developed field in its own, quite a mature field, there are distinct terminologies to denote specific understanding of um, immigration policies and their nature and what do they entail. So for instance, we talk about immigration policies to refer to policies that mediate the movement of people, or orderly migration from one country to another. We talk about diaspora engagement or diaspora building policies, which either grant rights or are trying to bridge a connection with the diaspora population. We talk about immigrant or immigration policies, so on and so forth. Um, and the understanding is that each label has a clear meaning and a clear understanding, a clear definition of what these policies entail in practice. My argument is that these labels have meaning and they have utility because we have accumulated enough information at the national level, both across time and across space, so multiple case studies, different time periods, to be able to zoom in on specific aspects of national immigration policies, such as their purpose. Yet this is not the case at a local level where we have no information about the types of policies that local government implements, whether uh, implement, what, what are their objectives, how do they go about it, so on and so forth. So, and this is for various reasons. One of the reasons is that this is a fairly new development. So it is a relatively new that local governments are taking specific measures uh, to tackle the issue of immigration. Another reason might be what has been termed a receiving country bias, um, so on and so forth. But the point is that we do not have the in-depth knowledge to have specific labels for specific types of local immigration policies, which is for the measures that local governments in origin country implement, which is why I prefer the term local immigration policies, which I find broad enough to encompass um, to clearly broad enough to clearly refer to, I mean, uh, broad enough in, indeed to allow for different manifestations of immigration policies in practice, whether they are related to migrants, whether they are related to the process of, send, um, of mediating uh, movement, but also the term itself, emigration, clearly denotes that this is an aspect dealing with the outside, movement of people outside of the country. So there is a term, it's clearly referring to emigration, processes of emigration, aspects of emigration. I'm also, um, I also decided on the term local immigration policies as opposed to terms such as diaspora policies or immigrant policies 
because folk uh, narrowing the definition or the label to diaspora policies would obscure the fact that policies are not only concerning um, immigrants, but uh, they can also facilitate at the local level. So local immigration policies can also facilitate outward migration. And I provided here two uh, examples, for instance, the mayor's dialogue, which facilitates um, migration between uh, cities in origin countries and cities in destination countries with the scope of skill exchange and um, a broader experience, or the mentor program. So uh, focusing on immigrant policies would obscure the fact that local governments also mediate migration. But more importantly, the reason why I focus on local immigration policies, and I use this terminology specifically, is because this label, this broad enough labor, general label would allow me to analyze type of policies who are not necessarily dealing with either the movement of people or with either um, the emigrant population abroad, but are dealing with other aspects of local government who are um, intrinsically connected to uh, managing emigration or managing its effects. And I'm gonna provide an example um, in my case study, but in my case study, one example is, and it's clearly stated as part of the local immigration strategy, is extensive investment in local infrastructure as to make the place attractive for migrants, for return migration. So these kind of policies that are neither related to the movement of people, neither related to migrant, to migrant necessarily, would be obscured by a label that will not be broad enough to capture it. So this is an explanation behind the labeling and then the actual definition of local immigration policies based on this understanding refers to the policies that local the, refers to the totality of policies, regulations and measures that local governments in origin countries implement in order to manage migration and its effects. Another note should be on the local aspect of local immigration policies because most of the time the local concerned cities particularly in the local immigration or local integration um, literature which is quite a mature field of, of research in my case as my own case study shows it's a village in romania so um the village is autonomous and independent enough and entrepreneurial itself in my case lo the local aspect denotes both cities and villages so it encompasses beyond the urban manifestation of immigration policies. So in, this is what are local po uh, immigration policies, measures that the local governments implement to deal with migration. Why are they implemented? Well, um, the answer to this question is um, intuitive. And the reason is that the effects of, emig uh, of immigration are most strongly felt at the lo local level where they change completely the community. They change the socioeconomic aspects of the community, but they also change political and cultural fabrics, uh, the political and cultural fabric of, of the locality in which they take place. Uh, for local governments, immigration is not just another local problem, is one of these wicked policy problems, which uh, affects a broad range of policy areas, including the provision of services of so the local economy, the labor, um, labor market, even local politics. So, for instance, the emigration of a significant part of the population can lead to depopulation, which can lead to a loss of tax revenue for the um, and then a diminishing of the local budget, who cannot, which cannot then um, continue provi the provision of certain services, which might lead to their dis uh, discontinuity, so on and so forth. But um, immigration can also affect the community cohesiveness, particularly in smaller um, localities such as villages or medium uh, and small towns. Uh, it can lead to social spatial inequality, which is something that I studied in, in this specific village, but I will not touch upon um, in this uh, paper, but it uh, can also have benefits, um, right? It can also lead to economic development, for instance, which is again the case of, of my um, village in Romania. So the reason why governments implement um, policies is because the effects, so there are different reasons. One reason might be that it's a bottom-up pressure from the electorate whose standard of living is decreasing. So for instance, the population loss of tax revenue, discontinuity of services means that the, the quality of life in the, in the area is diminishing and people are putting more pressure on the local government to do something about it. So this is bottom-up pressure. Another reason, and this is what happened in my case study, the one that I will present here. Another reason might be 
top-down pressure from national governments. So national governments are taking are having a defined and clearly a clearly defined strategy in relation to immigration, and they are expecting local governments to play a significant role in in this case. And this was um, what I presented. I had a snapshot of uh, Lithuania's uh, president urging local governments to take more active steps into managing the effect of immigration. So that can be a top-down approach, but at the same time, it can also be that the local governments themselves realize that the status quo is not significant is not sustainable in the long term that um, they need to implement measures to be able to <clears throat> reach the, the significant amount of budget that be able to deal with the population so on and so forth or to um, be able to to deal with the negative effects of migration and to tap into its potential effects so there can be three different reasons why local governments implement or decide to implement measures that deal with the effects of immigration once they, they decide to implement them how do these um, policies or these um, measures differ from national policies? And this is an interesting, um, uh, an interesting finding, and that is that local immigration policies can be developed within the framework of a national immigration policy. policy. So they can be uh, another way to, to implement the national immigration policy at another level of implementation, but they can also be implemented in the absence of a framework, of a national framework. Moreover, and that is the case of, of Romania, who doesn't have a national immigration policy. So uh, as an example, moreover, even if a national framework is in place, it doesn't necessarily imply that the objectives of the local immigration policies are the same as those of the national immigration policies. So um, of course, so, not, so local policies can be instrumentally used to achieve their own local strategies and objectives which might collide, which might collide with national interests. So for instance, for a country, immigration entails uh, lowering the pressure of unemployment, uh, lowering uh, unemployment rate, lowering the pressure of providing welfare benefits. It might benefit from remittances or other measures, where are, um, whereas a local uh, municipality or a local city who is greatly affected by, uh, by um, by, by the, the departure of a significant part of its population might not, um, so the country might take a less fair attitude to immigration, whereas the municipality or the locality um, might want to take more, more concrete measures, might want to incentivize return migration, for instance, or incentivize um, or create other type of measures that will be in direct conflict or will be different from the national objectives. Um, and another way in which local um, immigration policies differ from national ones is that local governments are uniquely suited to tackle immigration and its effects with policies and measures that can be more practical, can be more concrete, more tailored, more flexible, um, to, uh, tailored to the local um, needs of both the, the municipality or the locality but also the or the village, but also the needs of the immigrant population abroad. And I, uh, I put here that they can also cater to a potentially coalesced immigrant population abroad due to network effects. So it is much likelier that the population from a small city or a, a medium-sized village um, abroad will tend to coalesce in, in a particular region, in a particular city due to network effects. That is likely than um, the population of a whole country. So for instance, Romania's population, um, immigrant population, um, the um, destination countries are very uh, are quite varied and within destination countries depends on the skill level and occupations on the industry in which individuals work so on and so forth so one cannot talk of a coalesced um, population which might identify similar needs which might identify similar um, necessities that the policy can can tackle whereas for a smaller um, region or for a smaller city um, there is a high likelihood of the population coalescing and being much more easier to reach out to so um basically um, this in this part i argued that um now that governments are increasingly uh, entrepreneurial in, take, in tackling immigration, that um, they do so because of because they re feel the the benefits and negative effects of um, immigration strong, more strongly at the local level, and their policies, their me the measures that they implement are usually quite different from the national policies even when uh, implementing them within the national framework, but often you know, outside of national framework. So despite the, the lack of a national framework in place. So I'm gonna take a specific example to tackle these points. And I'm gonna look at the case of Bosanj, a village in Romania in the county of Suchava, the one red on the map. Um, 
which is one of the least developed regions in the country with one of the highest um, emigration rate. So the population of this specific village is about 6,000 individuals, 30% of which has emigrated, most the young population under um, the age of 40 um, years. So uh, 40, and yeah, under the age of 40. Destination countries include Germany, Austria, Belgium, and, and Greece, but there is a networking effect in that about a thousand um, of the individuals from the Bosanj, from the village, reside in Anderlecht, an area in Brussels, um, neighborhood in Brussels, um, and that's 50% of the emigrant population abroad. So there is a significant coalescing of the emigrant population abroad, which, as we will see in the case study, has significant effects for the type of policies that the local government implements and um, the type of the way it reaches out to its emigrant population abroad. This, um, uh, this case study is based on five semi-structured semi -structured interviews with local government uh, representatives um, and uh, the data was collected in spring 2019. So um, the village of Bosanj um, has experienced, ah, and here are a couple of photos that clearly show the distinction, um, that clearly show both the effects of immigration. On the left side are um, the houses in the center of the village, which is the core of the, the original part of the village. And on the right hand side are um, houses newly built, the, the neighborhoods that are expanding and clearly show the differences in, in terms of um, the housing. And um, it's also a very visual um, effect of, of, or a very visual symbol of the social inequality that migration holds also has um, generated within the village, but that's a different discussion. So these are just some photos from the village and illustrating how migration has visually at least changed the village in this way. So, um, Bosanj, the village of Bosanj has experienced about 30 or third of its population um, emigrating. Uh, the high emigration rate has affected a broad range of policy area, including the political, economic, labor market, social and spatial planning domains. And I started um, with the spatial planning um, in order to kind of show how these changes fit into another. So for instance, in terms of spatial planning, as you as um, seen from the photos, there's been an extensive building in the village which is something usual, uh, migrants usually tend to invest in houses and in accommodation and real estate. But that has led to um, the, the creation of new neighborhoods. So the, the village has changed significantly, expanding in different areas uh, due to the extensive building. The, the building itself, the construction boom in the village has had economic effects. So new shops have appeared in terms of um, new shops that cater to the extensive construction. So shops that um, include, uh, that sell shopping, uh, construction materials or interior design, lighting fixtures, um, so on and so forth, but also um, new supermarkets, new shopping stores that cater to the increased purchasing power of the local population due to the sending or receiving of remittances. The existence of new shops, the increase of the purchasing power of the local population has led to, led to an increase in tax revenue um, to the local budget, which in Romania, the local budget um, goes from the, the local taxes. And which has then budget increased budget has been used to um, in, to fund extensive investments in infrastructure. And I will talk a bit what kind of investment in infrastructure. So this, the the building, the expansion of the village has created economic effects, which has creating of course uh, also labor market effects. There's been a high labor demand in a specific sector, especially construction, which has also led to higher wages in that specific sector. Uh, um, and other uh, general, a general a low unemployment rate generally, but also a general uh, creation of labor demand into the village uh, as shop sellers, so on and so forth. Mostly these jobs are low skill so, and medium skill. So they do not still attract the high educated individuals that have left the village. Of course, uh, the immigrant population is a mix of low, uh, medium educated and high educated, but um, the type of jobs that are, pre are created in the, in the village mostly cater to the lower educated ones. 
the effects have also um, immigration has also affected um, social the social aspect um, one of the issues one of the the issues that the local government and the mayor mentioned was the fact that there is a record low reliance on welfare benefits and uh, they attribute that to the high immigration rate immigration is um, like an uh, represents an alternative for individuals who otherwise would have relied on on benefits from the state would who would have relied on support from the state and last least, um, immigration has deeply affected the political scene within the village. Uh, immigration and its effect is a raw issue for the local population. It's something that they are very much concerned about, and it's something that uh, they expected the mayor and the local government to deal with it. To deal with, which the premier, uh, previous uh, mayor, they they perceived not to have tackled successfully, um, which led to the change in the local government. The new mayor campaigned exclusively or um, extensively on immigration issues, and was selected to deliver on those promises. So in this case, um, the the policies, the the policies that the local government implemented to deal with the issue of migration and its effects came was the result of a bottom up pressure from the electorate from the local population to tackle immigration and defect they wanted their um, relatives back they wanted um, the village to be developing so on and so forth um so immigration has affected very much the the village of Osanj to the to such extent that um, the local population um, has started to pressure the local governments to take action. So the local government has then been um, compelled to implement uh, local immigration immigration policies. Um, how does the local immigration policy differ in Osanj differ from um, the immigration policy in Romania? Well, um, in this case, it's quite easy to compare them, I suppose, because Romania does not have um, a defined strategy in relation to immigration. There was a, a, at some point um, in light of Romania's joining um, the European Union when the country experienced an economic boom and then um, a rapid uh, labor shortage or a significant labor shortage in certain sector, the country was um, kind of flirting with the idea, was debating the idea of implementing some sort of policies that um, uh, incentivize return migration. And that was around 2007, 2008. But then the economic crisis started and, uh, and happened. And um, issues, other issues became much more important and took um, immigration's place on the political agenda. And now immigration issues are relegated to a, to a marginal spot. In, uh, in the national interest, um, which uh, is still the case. So it might be changing soon, but right now. Um, uh, of course, the country does have a general objective in relation to immigration, particularly a country that has experienced so much, um, such a high immigration rate in recent year. And the objective is to preserve the Romanian identity abroad and to strengthen tie with the diaspora and migrant association. And uh, this objective is mostly um, implemented or tried to be achieved through cultural exchanges and cultural visits and um, so on and so forth. So it doesn't go beyond this cultural um, aspect of, of immigration. On the other hand, um, in Bosanj, uh, the local government is very critical of the what they perceive to be a laissez-faire attitude of Romania's, of the countries on immigration issues. And they perceive immigration to pose a threat to the stability and the economic development of the village, but also to be a potential opportunity that they want to take advantage of. So um, in view of these uh, perceptions, the local government has a clear um, immigration strategy, which is based on two pillars. The first one is to incentivize return migration. So they are um, trying to uh, make people return to the village. The second one is to incentivize economic investments. So individuals, um, migrants abroad to, in, to invest in the, in the village either. Um, and I kind of show the types of investments that they um, implement. So um, I also wanted to, I said that the local policies differ from national ones, both in terms of their object, objectives, that they don't necessarily have the same objectives, but also in terms of the type, the nature of the policies. So in this sense, the local policies in, in Bosanj are more practical, more concrete, and more tailored, and I'll provide examples for those. So the two main objectives of the policies are to um, incentivize return migration and to incentivize investments. So one, one way that the village is supposed um, 
that the village intends to incentivize return migration is by making the village an attractive place to return to through extensive investments in infrastructure. And here, the, the local government has invested in streets payment, electricity, running water, gas, sewage, um, a, a firehouse, a renovation of a school, a, a building of a medical clinic, the first one in the village and one of the few villages in the country that has a medical clinic, street lighting, bus stations, sidewalks, parks, so on and so forth. And this might not seem like major investments, like, like significant changes, but in a country like Romania, where a third of population does not have war running water, this is a significant change. Another point to make is that they might not seem like immigration policies, but it, they cannot be this, this type of measures, the type of developmental measures within the country or um, cannot be disentangled from the broader immigration um, process affected the village. Um, the local mayor's perceptions and the government's perception is that these individuals that now live abroad have gotten used to a standard of living, which unless they find it back, um, back home, they are not going to return. So they expect certain conditions to be developed in order to return to, to their area of um, origin. But of course, and these are concrete and practical uh, what the mayor uh, measures to incentivize return migration. But of course, an attractive place is not um, sufficient for incentivizing return if it doesn't offer also employment opportunities. So in that, the village has tried to create employment and to make the brand the village as a business friendly environment. So it has, uh, to that extent, it has uh, created collaborations with the county, with county level initiatives um, that um, promote startups and business creation, which has resulted in over 200 businesses registered in the village, the third um, highest level in the county, which of also has um, medium sized and small sized cities. So the village is doing quite well from that side. Um, it has also offered tax free land to a local truck company for parking. So another type of concrete and practical um, measures, for instance, there's a quite significant, um, quite large trucking company so that uh, freight, road freight transport uh, that operates within Europe and they needed extra space to park the trucks. So um, the local government has offered that land for parking for free with the expectations that the trucking company will, ha will have more trucks, will hire more uh, local individuals, which in turn will um, again incentivize people to return because salaries are quite well paid um, as uh, truck drivers or um, and create um, a of course, taxes through um, labor taxes and so on and so forth. Another concrete and practical type of measure that the local government implemented for uh, to incentivize um, the economic environment and the labor market, local labor market. Um, another type of um, policies or measures that the local government has implemented. Um, they have tried to incentivize investments into the place and into the locality and place attachment. So one reason why many migrants from Romania, where many individuals, particularly young couples and young individuals migrate, is to um, get enough um, money or to gather enough uh, funds to build a house or to buy an apartment. So in order to help with that process, the local government has offered free land for house building to young immigrants. So those under 35 years of age for building a house, they have to build a house within two years of being offered. The rationale behind this measure has been that if they, of course, they build a house, they are, uh, they contribute to local um, development, to um, consumption, to taxes, so on and so forth. But at the same time, they get attached to the place. So they want, they invest in the place, so they will be more likely to return. Whether that um, has um, been successful or not remains to be seen. Lastly, the last dimension of the local government's um, type of measures is um, restoring trust in local institutions. And this um, is, um, emigration from Romania does not only happen for economic reasons, many times, um, particularly for high skilled migrants, it's disenchant uh, disenchantment with um, the corrupt system, the one for a different culture, a different system, so on and so forth. So one of the objectives of the local government has been to 
uh, to kind of reinstate and restore the trust in local institutions and their ability to do something for their constituencies and the local population. Uh, that has manifested in uh, this wish, this objective has manifested into an open door policies. Uh, the, the local government and the mayor is very active on social media where he'll, he communicates directly with immigrants from abroad, but also direct integration with um, immigrants. And that has taken first instance, as I was saying, um, a big chunk of the immigrant population abroad from the village resides in underlecht over a thousand um, individuals so um, the local government has reached out to the local government in uh, underlecht they have had exchanged um, they have foster exchanges collaborations at the time of the interviews they were um, preparing a culture exposition of romanian culture of local culture regional culture in underlecht and they were planning um, future collaborations and also taking um, more um, kind of focus groups and more direct contact with the immigrant population um, in underlect. So these are some of the types of policies that the local government um, implemented, which are some one, some they're very concrete, they're practical, sometimes can be very personal and tailored to the needs of the local population, but also of the um, immigrant population abroad. So um, to conclude briefly, what I've tried to show with this paper is that um, local governments in origin countries are increasingly taking matters into their own hands, um, implementing policies that deal with immigration and its effects. And these policies um, oftentimes can all work within the, the framework of a national strategy in place, but sometimes or sometimes can or oftentimes um, they, they do not follow the same objectives or are implemented despite the lack of a national policy in place. There are numerous implications and there are this case study um, that I um, accidentally found in Romania where research in uh, a separate topic um, it raises more questions than provides answers. So there is really a, a open avenue for future research. But um, some implications are be uh, are um, that understanding local immigration policies, um, it's a step towards understanding the relationship between immigration and local development that by promoting ties with the place of origin local policies incentivize transnational practicing so practices so keeping in touch with the um with the origin area which has socioeconomic political cultural effects for um area for both sending and this uh, receiving so origin and destination uh, localities um, these transnational practices uh, may constitute opportunities for cooperation, but may also affect the process of immigrant integration as destination. So these are all issues that can be further analyzed um, once we have more information on the type of local policies that uh, governments in origin countries um, implement in relation to immigration. Thank you for your attention. I think I went, oh yes, a bit over time, if I'm not mistaken, but um, yeah, I hope everyone- No, was... actually you're not over time because we started a little bit later because <laughs> I took some of your time doing the introduction. Anyway, let's open the floor for any discussion, any questions. And of course, thank you very much for this very informative um, uh, study and uh, presentation. Um, if anyone has a question, we're a small group, uh, you could just unmute yourself and ask the question, uh, or you could also uh, write it. Elaine, go ahead. <laughs> start my video so you can also see me um firstly thank you so much um it's always a pleasure listening to your presentations and also just to seeing you um i really enjoyed the presentation i always like hearing about these really in-depth case studies because i think they really bring things to life um and you can really see the um yeah, how things work in practice and how this kind of local national level interaction might come into play um i do have um two questions for you um the first is uh, related to internal migration mm -hmm. um, and I was just wondering how far uh, the investments in the village also encourage internal mobility towards these places mm -hmm. um, and also how much internal mobility there is from the villages and whether these policies are also targeting those types of uh, groups. Um, and the second is actually a much broader question, and that's more to do with, uh, um, I see at the global level, there's this increasing shift to paying a lot of attention to the local level. You identified it with the mayoral forum and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, and my question, because I'm all into following the money, mm -hmm. is how much of the investments are coming from the tax revenue, the local or the increase in the local tax revenue, and how much is being 
cha like channeled from external sources such as the EU? I don't know if you have the answer to that question, but um, it's just a question that, that I have. Should I take each question individually and or should I gather some and then try to answer? Uh -huh. Up to you. <laughs> Video. Okay, then I'll just uh, respond to this one. Thank you, Elaine. It's always good to see you too. And it's always, these are very good questions. I'm happy um, uh, that you ask them. Actually, in with the regards to internal migration, the local government has, um, their specific strategy is to deal only with return migration. So they only deal with their own people abroad. So they're trying to bring those people in. They do not consider um, necessarily in turn like attracting people from nearby uh, villages or nearby county counties, but that is happening nevertheless. So uh, there is a growing demand because of all these developments that I showed, or the building, the booming construction, the um, high, uh, the creation of labor demand, so on and so forth. But uh, this, the, the salaries, for instance, in the construction sector, the mayor was saying that they have increased by 20%, but they are still very low compared to salaries in construction sector abroad. So they don't always incentivize people to return, but they do incentivize people from nearby counties, which are generally even lo less developed or even and poorer to come to the region. Actually, I was interviewing someone um, and we were in front of the house and the, it was just pointing, oh, look, they're from the nearby county. They came to work here. So there is inadvertently um, attracting internal migration to the area because the area is so developing um, economically. So it's not, uh, it might be successful in attracting, they focus only on in attracting their own people back, but inadvertently they actually attract from different regions. Um, and in terms of revenues, this is actually a very good question. And of course, it, at the local level, it also depends on, on the country and the um, autonomy of uh, villages or cities in managing their own budget and how much they get from the national budget and what they do. But in this, um, in, in the Romanian context, particularly, um, the local government can, um, the local budget comes from the taxes, the local taxes and everything. So in this sense, the government was uh, the uh, the mayor was saying that the um, he had thirteen projects in place, um, infrastructure, all kind of infrastructure project. Three of those were with European money. Two of those were with, with funds from the national government, and the remaining were with local funds. So he was very proud of the fact that he was also saying uh, it's a, it was a small um, city hall, a small municipality, and they had 32 people, including cleaning staff and all that. And they were saying, we have given everybody the maximum threshold for their um, position of salary, and we still have enough budget to implement all of these projects. But of course, they complement this project with funds from the European Union and from the national budget as well. But it is an interesting question, and it's inter it's also interesting to see um, uh, how the money flows and what they do. But I've also noticed that at least in um, the Romanian case, but a bit I'm also familiar with the Baltic states, they are not a part of this international global cooperation um, at the local level. So this city, you know, the mayor's dialogue, they are not a part of that. And they are not um, a target of this kind of, uh, so I'm not sure whether they would be interested in uh, in forming that. I'm not sure whether they also, the extent to which they look and learn from other practices uh, within the country or outside. So this is also something interesting to, to find out. Um, yeah, thank you. I hope this answered your question, these questions. Are there any other questions or any points, any comments? I don't see any hands, but we can also finish earlier. <laughs> but I, I just wanna make sure everyone has the time to rethink their thoughts. Could also add a follow up if nobody else wants Go to. Ahead. <laughs> um, so um, I, I think that's really, really interesting. I think on the internal mobility question, I just think generally about gentrification. Mm -hmm. And I just wonder about the long term effects, because I often think that some of these strategies are almost to give a boost to mm -hmm. local development, but it's not a long term strategy. Mm -hmm. um, and I wonder really like where there's been these, so in urban studies, like you, you see a lot of like local areas that do this and then they displace populations um, and completely change the nature 
of villages. So in trying to attract people back, they could inadvertently actually be completely changing the nature of the village. Mm -hmm. um, it was more of a comment and a thought mm -hmm. rather than a, a question. I think I see two aspects to this. The first one is the long term strategy of the local government. And at least this local government that I analyzed didn't seem to have a very much long term strategy. It seemed more like, OK, we have all these initiatives. Let's just implement them and see what sticks and what works. And then we'll think, I mean, the objectives are, of course, broad. Let's make people return and let's make people invest. But they don't have a longer term strategy that has more. It's more complex and they consider all aspects. So sometimes it's felt like the, the policies that the measures that they implemented were a bit ad hoc and patchy and just try to deal with different issues that the government was just discussing uh, with the or was hearing from the immigrant population or was trying to respond directly to those. So you didn't have like a, a very, um, I don't know, intentional uh, strategy in that sense. The other thing that uh, I, the other point that I got from your question was the um, this kind of gentrification. And um, I think that is happening already in the sense that you notice like from the photos that I've showed um, the new, new neighborhoods that are appearing in the village um, are completely like they're not from a Romanian village are for a completely different picture. So mm -hmm. the difference is very visible, but it's also very felt within the village. So that's what I meant by social, social spatial inequality. People felt that um, it might trigger more migration from them because they want to um, also um, be able to afford that. But it, it also triggered just resentment. Uh, people felt like there's never been this kind of envy in our village. There's never been this kind of, oh, you have that car and I don't have that car and all that. And so people also felt that. So already one of these effects of migration was kind of splitting in the village. Um, of course, this was very visible, the economic part, but it was also the part of People that were returning, they they were perceived to return with um, Western values of um, of individuality and something that the village did not did. Um, yeah, people were different. So in that sense, there was also kind of a chasm, a, 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 a kind of a, a hole between the the people living there and the people returning. So um, this is something that the. the it hasn't been um, considered at any point and no reintegration policies and nothing like that is just a, a bunch of policies um, that they're trying now. They're at the beginning. So I think they're just learning as they go. But these are interesting implications to look at. And yeah, that's why I found the proj this project so exciting to just, um, yeah, find out more about it. Thank you. Um, yes. The question. So Vladimir has two questions, uh, but his microphone is not working. Uh, so he says, you mentioned the bottom-up pressure on local government. Are the migrants themselves involved in the bottom-up pressure or only the locals who have remained? And then the second question, not directly linked to your focus, but have you encountered any cases of return migrants who, upon return, have become involved in the local government? Very good questions. Thank you, Vladimir. Um, I will start with the first one. I mentioned about the map pressure on the local government, and yes, migrants are also involved. Uh, as a matter of fact, and this is something that the new mayor takes uh, very much pride in, is that uh, on discussions on he was very active on social media. So social media played an important role in the 2016 elections when this new mayor was uh, was. Um, elected officially elected and he was very active um, talking about migration and we have to do something and I will do something for that so a significant number of uh, they were they were saying about a couple of hundreds of individuals return actually specifically for the local elections to specifically put the mayor um, to elect this mayor who um, cared about them and promised to do something. So in that sense, um, he is very proud and um, individuals from not diaspora per se, but immigrants abroad are very much involved in local policies and are very much uh, involved in elections. And um, so yes, the bottom up pressure on local government also comes from uh, the migrants who complained that nothing is being done for them. Um, and um, yeah, and they were taken into account. Um, I have not encountered cases of returned migrants who um, 
that got involved into the local government. But in the, I have also not looked specifically at this, but in the case of Romania, there have, at the national level, there have been cases where migrants um, have been involved in uh, creating um, technocratic parties, so parties that were, um, that got involved in the national government or they formed their own parties and wanted to instill change, but not at the local government. As a matter of fact, I didn't look much at the return migration rate. Uh, in this case, I was just more interested in the, what's done for them, not in how effective or successful the policies are. But thank you. These are very good questions. I see the hand of Terjan. Uh, you can go ahead and ask your question. But I still don't hear you um, in case you're talking. Thank you. Um, you're on, you're unmuted, but I still don't hear your voice. Yeah, me neither. That's all right. I think. Um, about to write the question, we wait for your yeah. question. <laughs> no pressure, take your time typing. Take your time. <laughs> we still have more or less six minutes, so it's all right. But yeah, also from my side, until we receive the question, it's always interesting to see how really like I mean, like um, return migration can really impact um, like some villages in Egypt, for example, like I'll give you a very small example. So, you know, Mohammed Salah is a big football player in uh, Liverpool mm -hmm. and he comes from an extremely, extremely poor, vulnerable uh, village like no one ever even knew about it and then of course now that he's making uh, good enough uh, money he transformed the city like i mean even though he does return and help his own family and everything but you can really see a huge shift to the extent that everyone around the city they just want to move there and they're like yeah we want to move there because he made better education um, he may uh, he we they have like better access to health, uh, so he really transformed the city because with the money he had, he was able to develop an entire uh, village. Meanwhile, all the villages nearby are extremely poor, like living maybe under a poverty line. But yeah, it's always very interesting uh, to see uh, the the impact of return migration for sure. Even though he is kind of in a circular migration back and forth but <laughs> yeah let's see the questions so considering the examples you have given why wouldn't you call the policies you describe diaspora policies or migration and development policies mm -hmm. i'm asking because in fact all the players seem to be potential returnees or return retur potential returnees or returnees reducing emigration seems to be a short term byproduct of these policies mm -hmm. It is a very good question. Um, actually, um, the terminology of, of the concept, um, it's something that I spend a lot of time in uh, on. And um, I decided, like I was saying in, in uh, during my presentation, I decided on the terminology immigration policies because it's broad enough to allow for different manifestations of these policies in practice. So, um, for instance, I would not try to call diaspora policies in general. I have a, um, a something with the term diaspora itself because Romania does not have a diaspora. It has an immigrant population abroad. There's that diaspora itself is more of um, um, historical. There's there needs to be something that coalesces this, it coalesces this population abroad. But I would not call them um, immigrant policies uh, because in my mind these are not only policies that. 
um, deal with, um, in this particular case, yes, there are no policies that deal with, for instance, facilitating migration abroad or facilitating the movement. But in general, there are um, origin cities, origin localities that also facilitate the movement of individuals from one place to another between different cities. Like I mentioned, uh, the mayor's dialogue, which uh, facilitate migration from um, um, a city in Morocco to uh, Milano for exchange of uh, for skill exchange so individuals um the local government facilitates migration of certain individuals for a certain period of time there. So that is not an immigrant policy, that is immigration policies. Um, and that is an immigration policies because it facilitates an orderly movement on individuals. So naming it diaspora policy would be, um, would reduce, would not include that type of policies. Uh, in place. Uh, of course, that is not the case of my own case study, but I didn't want the concept to only be illustrative of my own case study. I wanted it to be illustrative and leave room for include for the inclusion of other types of case studies. Um, why not migration and development policies? Um, that might be um, a suitable because migration is, but it's also what would imply because uh one way to to think of this case study is that the mayor the local government is trying to develop is implementing development policies to attract return migration so development would come before return migration but on the other hand one might think that is in implementing policies to attract return migration so that in can be conducive to more development of the village so that's also something um that would, I would find it inaccurate in terms of um, in terms of reflecting the type of policies that are listed in these case studies and in other uh, case studies have um, taken place. So, for instance, the restoring trust in institutions doesn't feel as much as a development policy, but as a type of measure or um, initiative that leads towards or that um, is a broader part of emigration, but is not necessarily development or is not necessarily, it's, it is connected to the emigrant population, but it's not necessarily um, only that. So that's why I'm, I prefer the, the local emigration policies term because it's quite broad and it encompasses the different types of policies that I find either in this case studies, case study or in others. I hope that answers the question. Elaine also wrote uh, a comment uh, saying um, maybe local level migration relevant or related policies could achieve the same goal but have less of the connotations of facilitating emigration. Um, migration, yes, migration related. But again, um, there are policies at the local level that facilitate immigration. So they might not, but they might not be uh, very common, but they exist. So um, yeah, so they would be migration relevant, but they also would be. Um, so it's basically included in my um, last, uh, in my previous answer that um, immigrant policies or diaspora policies would exclude this uh, facilitating immigration policies, which are still happening on the ground. Um, <clears throat> development policies would also exclude facilitating of immigration. So I focus on immigration because the term suggests movement, suggests that is immigration, but also can include facilitation of immigration, connection with um, the immigrant population abroad, um, but also other type of policies that are not necessarily uh, direct ones, so local investment, local development. So um, it's something that I, I thought about um, a lot and it's, um, Something that yeah I, I reached this um, this compromise in a way that uh, but I I know and I expected that uh, the term itself would be something that um, yeah would not always be um, perceived as the most fitting. Thank you very much for everyone um, everyone's questions. Thank you very much, Dr. Magda, for the presentation and for making time and for all for answering answering all the questions and uh, making this discussion very uh, interesting um so our next seminar is on the 22nd of april uh, if you haven't received the invitation uh, please reach out to me and i'll forward it to you 
again, thank you very much. This seminar is going to be available online uh, once it is available. Um, I mean, you can go on the YouTube, YouTube channel uh, on the migration and development uh, section and you will find it perhaps in a week or so. Uh, and I wish you all the best and a great week uh, ahead. Thank you. Thank, thank you so you much for having me. It was great seeing everybody. Uh, and thank you for the great questions. Uh, they gave me food for thought. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.